MEN, multiple earth neutral. Why is it important? In order for us to understand the importance of this MEN, first we need to understand current flow in a home. Let's have a look at the drawing behind me and hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense. We've got our transformer, which is our source of supply. We've got our pit in the street, your underground coming in, your consumer's mains through your meter. And then we've got our switchboard. Out in the field, we've got a power point and we have an appliance. If we use our 240 volt tester and we plug in on our active and our neutral terminal, we're gonna get 240 volts. If we use our tester between our active and our earth terminal, we're gonna get 240 volts also. But do we have current? Do we have current at that power point with nothing plugged in? In order to have current, we need to be able to create a circuit. We need to be able to have this appliance plugged into this power point. And the moment we do that and it's in the on position, current can now flow. So let's have a look at what happens to current when we plug it in. Over here, we've got our transformer, our source of supply. We've got our three phase. We're just tapping off single phase right now. And our current is flowing along in our active conductor through the pit in our underground consumer's mains up through our service fuse, which is our short circuit protection up through our smart meter. So we know exactly how much power is being drawn. It will move along through our main switch, which is our overload protection. Then it will come up through our RCD, down in through our circuit breakers, which is our overload protection of our cable. And then we'll move along out into the field to our power point. Our appliance is plugged in. We'll continue to move down to our appliance and through this element here, which is a predetermined amount of amps that it's been designed for when it got made. All appliances are gonna be different. And now what's gonna happen? We've got amps at that appliance right now. Where's it gonna go? What's it gonna do? The current will always try and get back to the source of supply, which is our transformer. And how's it gonna do that? It's gonna do that via our return path, which is our neutral cable. So now we can follow this neutral. We've got current flowing in that neutral right now. All the way up, it'll go through our protective neutral bar, continue along through our RCD, out of the RCD and we'll make our way back to our main neutral bar. Out of that main neutral bar, onto our main neutral cable, We'll go through our neutral link into our consumer's mains in the underground, back out through the pit, and we'll eventually make its way back to the source of supply, which is our transformer. So current will flow into the home through the appliance on your active cable, and we'll want to return back on the neutral cable all the way back to the source of supply. And this will happen every time that you plug something in in a home, whether it's an appliance or a light fitting, current will flow in and will flow out on the neutral cable. Everything's happy, everything's good. But what's gonna happen when something goes wrong in the property? Let's take a look at this appliance and see what happens when this active conductor touches the frame. And we're lucky that this frame is earth and it's protected by our protective earthing cable. So now we've got a different path for our current to flow back. Rather than the new neutral, it's jumping onto our earth cable, on our protective earth cable. And the current is flowing along this earth cable back to the earth bar. And now where's it gonna go? We've got an earth electrode in the ground is that the path it's gonna take? Is it gonna try and go underground from this earth electrode all the way back to our source of supply? It will take too long that way and there's too much resistance in the ground to actually go back to our source of supply that way. The way it will go is via this cable that's linked between our earth bar and our neutral bar. And that's our MEN connection, also known as our MEN link. We've already got a connection from our neutral bar back to the source of supply. 
So that's the path it's going to take. So let's follow it along now. So now our fault current is going to jump onto the neutral after it's gone via the MEN. And it's going to continue along the neutral through the MEN link back in the underground through the pit and will make its way back to the source of supply via this MEN as quick as possible. But why? Why do we want it to go back? Why do we want to create another path for current to flow when there's a fault? The main reason we do this is so that our protective devices can do what they're supposed to do. So we have automatic disconnection of supply, whether it's a safety switch and the safety switch is detected and an imbalance of supply. It's got earth leakage running along the earth wire. It hasn't returned in the neutral. It's an unbalance. It's going to trip off. If this appliance is only protected by a circuit breaker and we've got that active conductor touching the frame, then that's going to be a short to earth. It's going to ramp up so much current because it's, it's not going to just draw a predetermined amount of current right now. It's going to draw more current than what that circuit breaker is, wants to give out. And that's why that circuit breaker will, will trip off. So the whole reason of that MEN link is to get all our fault current of all our protective earths right throughout the installation, back via that MEN link into that neutral cable, back to our source of supply, so that our automatic disconnection of supply, the safety switches or our circuit breakers can trip off. One, for the prevention of electrocution and also the prevention of fire. Hopefully that makes sense.